My spouse came out to me as asexual a few months ago. Tomorrow, I am handing them divorce papers. They are going to be devastated. Basically the title. My spouse and I have been together for eight years. Our sex life has had lots of ups and downs. Sometimes it felt like it was fire and was really good, but there were long stretches where I felt like I was starving. While they never denied me when I initiated, lack of initiation on their part has destroyed my self-esteem and has left me so incredibly unfulfilled. I have so missed the feeling of being desired and having my partner seduce me. It was really hard for my spouse to come out. They were so nervous and scared. I fucking hugged them and thanked them for telling me. I fucked up and told them everything will be alright. But it won't be. I can't go the rest of my life with a partner who isn't sexually attracted to me. So I spoke with a lawyer. I'm so worried about my spouse. They are really dependent on me socially, emotionally, and financially. And I know that they love me. They love me more than anyone ever has in my entire life. I wish love could be enough for me to be happy in a relationship. Tomorrow is really going to suck. ETA, just to make things clear, an open relationship is not an option. I am strictly monogamous. I am not the type of person who is capable of having multiple partners. An open relationship isn't going to help me meet my needs that are currently missing in my relationship. What I need is for my spouse to be sexually attracted to me. And for those of you who have assumed the gender of myself and my spouse, the majority of you are wrong. Watch your assumptions. 11-year-old Kitty with broken slash dislocated jaw has a long vet visit ahead of her, couple weeks. Need ideas to make her more comfy please. I had to take our family cat to the emergency vet last night. She had a dislocated and broken jaw that required surgery to have it fixed. Sad face. She has come out of surgery just fine and the emergency vet says she can be released from their hospital tomorrow. Unfortunately she has some pretty intensive post-op care required that I'm not going to be able to handle on my own, so I have made arrangements with her regular vet to board her during her recovery. I'm looking for ideas and suggestions to make her a little more comfy during all of this. I figured I would bring her bed and a blanket so she has something that smells like home, but would absolutely love ideas. I've heard of pheromone collars that ARR are supposed to help cats relax and stay calm. Are any of those good? Also, looking for recommendations for super palatable wet foods or liquid treats. She is going to be on a soft and liquid diet for a while. She can be really picky at the best of times, so I want to arm the staff with lots of options. And this is kinda weird, but do you think I should visit her during her recovery? She and I have a more roommate type of relationship. I'm actually really allergic to cats, I've been okay living with her by taking medication, thorough cleaning, air filters and her and I respecting each other's space, but actual contact with her results in me getting incredibly itchy and breaking out in hives, so even though we've lived together for years, she and I are not super bonded. Her person will not be able to see her. I am honestly don't know a super lot about cats. I'm not sure if a familiar face would be a comfort or an annoyance. Thanks in advance. I just want this little girl to feel better, sad face. Tastiest soft food or treat? Even if it is unhealthy garbage. Need to get kitty eating after surgery. Tastiest soft food or treat? Even if it is unhealthy garbage. Need to get kitty eating after surgery. Our cat had surgery on Wednesday morning for a broken and dislocated jaw. She made it through surgery and vet is optimistic. But we need to get her eating again. She has to have soft food for a few months. I'm looking for recommendations for anything soft that might get her going again. So far the only thing she has willingly consumed is goat cheese, vet is okay with this, it was actually a vet tech's idea. Thanks in advance. Update. I have a not very happy update. I told my STBX that we needed to talk. We sat down and pretty much as soon as I mentioned that I wanted to end the marriage due to our sexual incompatibility, they started to become incredibly emotional. First with crying and begging me to reconsider. Then when I had held fast to my choice, they became very angry with me. They started yelling and being belligerent. 
So I told them I was leaving and they followed me out to my car and slammed their fist hard enough on the hood they left a sizable dent. I actually never even got around to telling them I had already spoken with an attorney or let them have the preliminary draft of our divorce agreement. I went to stay in a hotel, my STBX continued to try and text and call me. They left a few really nasty voicemails and a few begging and crying for us to keep working on our marriage before I blocked them to get some rest. The next morning I came to realize that the police had been trying to contact me. Turns out that my STBX went on an absolute rampage through the house. Many of my personal items were destroyed. Holes punched and kicked into the walls. Some very sentimental items of mine are now damaged beyond repair. They even took my 80-year-old jade plant out back and put it on the grill. That had been my grandmother's plant. I'm devastated about that. Apparently during the rampage the neighbors called the cops with a noise complaint. When the officers showed up there was an altercation and my STBX ended up getting arrested. They are now facing charges for disorderly conduct, resisting arrest and assault on a peace officer. The worst part though, is that somehow during the rampage, arrest or while left alone overnight, my STBX's cat got badly injured and needed to be taken to the emergency vet for surgery. She pulled through surgery okay and is currently being boarded at her regular vet's office for post-op care as I am unable to provide the level of care she needs. She should be okay but I feel really bad for her, her life is turned upside down, she is away from home and the last memory she has of her favorite person was seeing them be a monster. I'm not sure what I am going to end up doing with her ultimately. But I am doing what I can to get her feeling better. I knew my STBX would get emotional and cry and yell, I knew they would be argumentative about it. Those were a big part of why I wanted to have all my ducks in a row before speaking with them. I am super thankful to my therapist who helped me roleplay the talk. I had already had a packed bag in my car and was able to stay calm and cool-headed enough to leave when I did. My ex still has not posted bail and I absolutely refuse to do so. They've been calling me from lockup begging me to, but also yelling at me. I have refused to take any of the calls. The preliminary divorce agreement where I was attempting an amicable divorce with decent spousal support for them is out the fucking window now. My attorney is fairly confident that with the damages to the house, the cost of surgery for my STBX's cat, my STBX's violent and threatening behavior toward me, and our pre-existing prenup, that the divorce will be very favorable to me. Guess my state doesn't suck as hard as I thought. My attorney has advised me to hold off on filing until we know the outcome of my STBX's criminal convictions as that can also impact things. I have a hearing this week for a restraining order against my STBX, so if they do somehow miraculously make bail, they at least can't come back here. And on a personal note slash gotta throw this out into the universe and get it off my chest, to the person wearing the Batman shirt in Home Depot last Saturday who chatted up the person wearing the TMNT shirt. Thank you. A very deep sincere thank you. If you are reading this I hope you see why I declined to exchange numbers with you. There is a lot of chaos in my life ATM. But you are a glimmer of hope for me of what my future life could be like. Additional info. The cat is at her vet recovering from her surgery. She had a broken and dislocated jaw. It required surgery to fix. She should be alright, unfortunately I am actually fairly allergic to cats. I can handle living with her with lots of air filters, thorough daily cleaning and allergy meds, but I can't pet her or be in close contact without breaking out into hives. I'm kinda in a pickle with her. She is 11 years old and she has lived in my home for 8 of those years. On one hand, if she lives with me for the rest of her days she at least gets to be in the home she has known and loved most of her life, but she won't get to be cuddled or petted much at all. I'm considering trying to rehome her after her recovery, but that is a lot of change for an elderly kitty, I'm not sure what the best thing for her is. I'll consult with her vet when she is eating on her own and off meds and see what they think will be in her best interest. I honestly don't know much about cats in general. I could never have them and due to the allergies she and I have had more of a friendly roommate type of relationship than a pet slash owner one. My husband doesn't know that I know what he's up to. My 33F husband 34M and I had our first baby back in June of last year. My husband's aunt gifted our son a lovely chunky knitted blanket. 
The blanket is so soft and I have made multiple comments about how I would like to find a full size blanket just like it because it is so cozy and I'm kind of jealous of my baby. Well, this past weekend my husband snuck off to the store. He refused to tell me where he was going and why, but I later found a plastic bag with the logo of a local crafting store. That evening, DH stated that he would like to have an hour of alone time every night after our son goes to sleep. He stressed that he would not like to be disturbed, but if I needed him then I could call slash text him. I agreed to this because we are both adjusting to have very little me time since the birth of our son. Last night, during his alone time our son started crying. I checked the baby monitor and saw that he had simply lost his pacifier and was going back to sleep. However, the baby monitor also shows part of our son's room, not just his crib. In the corner of his room I saw my husband sitting on the floor with a bunch of chunky yarn in front of him. I turned the volume up and heard that he was watching a YouTube video on how to finger knit. This sweet man is making me a blanket. He absolutely loves surprising me but is terrible at keeping secrets. I just know that he is going to slip up and accidentally mention something about the blanket at some point. I plan on acting clueless so that I will still be surprised when he gives it to me. I just love him so much and I'm so delighted that he's learning a new skill so I can have a custom blanket. Update Brief backstory, I posted recently about how I checked the baby monitor while my son was sleeping and saw my husband sitting on the floor of my son's room finger knitting a blanket for me after I made a comment on how I wanted a chunky blanket. My sweet husband broke. He kept on mentioning that he was working on a surprise for me. I would occasionally ask what this mysterious project was and he would get a cheeky smile and say, I can't tell you. That eventually evolved into him repeatedly telling me that keeping the surprise was really hard and he wanted to just tell me. I kept saying no. You've kept it a surprise for this long, you can keep going. But one day after dinner he decided he couldn't keep it in anymore. He showed it to me. It was only about one quarter done, but it was lovely. The yarn was really soft and was my favorite color. I could tell he had taken his time because of the consistency of all the loops. Even unfinished it was perfect. He told me that he kept moving it around to different hiding spots, but since our house is very small it was only a matter of time before I accidentally found it. He said he had run out of yarn and asked if I wanted to pick out another color to add to it. I said yes and we made a little date out of it. We grabbed lunch and then walked around the craft store before I picked out a complimentary color to the one he chose. He hasn't had much time to work on it the last few days, but he assured me it will be finished by my birthday. I'll post a picture of the blanket when it's finished. For now, I am wildly impressed with how long he kept it a secret and I'm so excited to have my first ever handmade blanket.